It's the Cube, covering the virtual Vertica Big Data Conference 2020, brought to you by Vertica. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this digital coverage of the Vertica Big Data Conference. You're watching the Cube, and my name is Dave Vellante. It's my pleasure to invite in Ben White, who's a senior database engineer at Domo. Ben, great to see you, man. Thanks for coming on. Great to be here and here. You know, as I said, uh, you know, earlier when we were off camera, I, I really was hoping I could meet you face to face in, in Boston this year. But hey, I'll take it. And, uh, and, you know, our community really wants to hear from experts like yourself. But let's start with, with Domo as the company. Share with us what Domo does and what your role is there. Well, if I can go straight to the, the official, what Domo does is we provide, um, we process data at BI scale. We, we, we provide BI leverage at cloud scale in record time. And so what that means is, you know, we are a business operating system where we provide a number of uh, analytical abilities to companies of all sizes, but we do that at cloud scale. And so I think that differentiates us quite a bit. So a lot of your work, if I understand it, and just in terms of just understanding what Domo does is, there's a lot of pressure in terms of be, being real time. Um, it's not like you, you sometimes don't know what's coming at you. So it's ad hoc. Um, I wonder if you could sort of talk about that, confirm that, and maybe add a little color to it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's probably the um, biggest challenge it is to being um, to operate in Domo is that it is an ad hoc environment. And, and certainly what that means is that you've got um, analysts and executives that are able to submit their own queries uh, without very, with, with very few limitations. So from an engineering standpoint, the challenge in that, of course, is that you don't have this predictable dashboard to plan for when it comes to uh, performance planning. And so it definitely presents some challenges for us that we've done some pretty unique things, I think, to address those, right? So it sounds like your background fits well with that. I, I, I understand you. <laughs> People have called you a database whisperer and an envelope pusher. Um, what does that mean to a to a DBA in this in this day and age? Well, the whisperer part is probably a, a lost art in, in the sense that it's not really sustainable, right? The idea that you know whatever it is I'm able to do with the database, it has to be repeatable, and so that's really where analytics comes in, right? And that's where pushing the envelope comes in, and in a lot of ways, that's where vertical comes in with this open architecture. And so as a person who has a reputation for saying, I understand this is what our limitations should be, but I think we can do more, having a, a platform like Vertical with such an open architecture kind of lets you push those limits quite a bit. I mean, I've always felt like, you know, Vertical when I first saw the Stonebreaker architecture and talked to some of the early founders, I always felt like it was the you know, Ferrari of, of databases, certainly at the time. And it sounds like you guys use it in that in that regard. Um, but talk a little bit more about how you use Vertica. Why, you know, why MPP? Why Vertica? You know, why why can't you do this with our, our DBMS? Educate us a little bit on sort of the basics. But for us, it was part part of what I mentioned when we started when we talked about the very nature of the Domo platform, where there's a, a, a an incredible amount of uh, resiliency required. And so Vertica, the MPP platform, of course, allows us to build uh, individual database clusters that can perform best for the workload that might be assigned to them. So the, um, the open, the um, expandable, the, the, um, the, the, the ability to grow Vertica, right, as your, your base grows, those are all important factors when you're choosing early on, right, without a real idea of how growth would be or what it would look like. If you were kind of throwing a, something into the dark, you looked at the Vertica platform and you could see well, as I grow, I can kind of deal with this, right? I can do some some unique things with the platform in terms of its open architecture that will allow me to not have to make all my decisions today, right? About how I'm going. So you're using uh, Vertica. I know at least in part you you working with AWS as well. Can you describe sort of your environment? Are you do you have anything on prem? Is everything in the cloud? What's your setup look like? Sure, we have a, a hybrid cloud environment where we have a significant presence in public clouds and our own private cloud. It's 
And so, yeah, having said that, we certainly have a really um, uh, an extensive presence, I would say, in AWS. And so they're definitely a good partner of ours when it comes to providing the um, databases and the, and the server power that we need to operate our platform. From the standpoint of engineering and architecting a database, what were some of the challenges that you faced when you had to create that hybrid architecture? Um, what, did, what did you face and, and how did you overcome that? Well, you know, some of the, um, well, there are some things we faced in terms of, one, it made it easy that Vertica and AWS have their own, um, obviously, they play well together, <laughs> we'll say that. And so Vertica was designed to run on AWS. And so that part of it, took care of itself. Now our own um, private cloud and being able to connect that to our public clouds has been a part of our own engineering abilities. And again, I don't want to make little light of it. It's certainly not impossible. And so we've, uh, some of the challenges though as it pertains to the database really were in the early days. And you mentioned um, when we talked a little bit earlier about um, Vertica's most recent Eon mode, and I'm sure you'll get to that. But when I think about early challenges, some of the early challenges were the architecture of enterprise mode. When I talk about all of these, this idea that we could have unique databases or database clusters of different sizes or this elasticity, that's really, if you know the, the enterprise architecture, that's not necessarily the enterprise architecture. So we had to do some unique things, I think, to overcome that right early to get around the rigidness of uh, enterprise. Yeah, I mean, I hear you, right? Uh, if enterprise is complex and and you like when things are hardened and, and fossilized, but in your ad hoc environment, that's not what you needed. So talk more about Eon Mode. What, what is Eon Mode for you and how do you uh, apply it? What are, what are some of the challenges and opportunities there that you found? Um, so the opportunities were certainly in its elastic um, architecture and the ability to separate compute and storage immediately meant that for some of the um, unique data paths that we wanted to take, right? We could do that fairly quickly. Certainly we could expand databases, right, quickly. But more importantly, now you could reduce them. Because previously in the past, right, when I mentioned the enterprise architecture, the idea of, of growing a database in itself has its pain, right, as far as the time it takes to see the data and that. But to, re to then think about taking that database back down is a no, a no go. All of a sudden with Eon, right, you had this elasticity where you could kind of start to think about auto scaling where you could go up and down and maybe you could save some money or maybe you could improve performance or maybe you can meet demand at a time when the customers need it most in a real way, right? So it, it was, it's definitely a game changer in that regard. I, I always love to talk to the customers because I get to, you know, I hear from the, from the vendor what they say and then I like to sort of validate it. So, you know, Vertica talks a lot about separating compute and storage, and they're not the only one from an architectural standpoint that do that, but Vertica stresses that they're the only one that does that with a hybrid architecture. They can do it on-prem, they can do it in the cloud. Um, from your experience, it, it, well, first of all, is that true? Um, you may or may not know, but, and is that advantageous to you, and, and if so, why? Well, it, first of all, it's certainly true. Um, earlier in some of the original, um, beta testing for the on-prem beyond mode stuff. We, I was able to participate in it and be aware of it. So it's certainly a reality day. Um, it's actually supported on pure storage with a uh, flash blade and it's um, quite impressive. Um, you know, for who, who will that, who that'll be for? Tough one. And that's probably Vertica's question that they're probably still answering. But I think obviously some enterprise users that probably have some hybrid cloud, right? They have some architecture, they have some hardware that their sales want to make use of. Um, we certainly would probably fit into one of their, um, their, you know, their market segments that they would say we might be the ones to look at on-prem um, Eon mode. But again, the, the, the beauty of it is the elasticity, right? The, the idea that you could have this. Um, and so a lot of times, so I want to go back real quick to separating compute and sure. Right. You know, we talk about separating it. And I like to think of it maybe more as like decoupling because in, the, in a true way, it's not necessarily separated because ultimately you bring the compute and the storage back together. But to be able to dec decouple it quickly, replace nodes, bring in nodes, that certainly um, fits, I think, what we were trying to do in building this kind of 
um, ecosystem that could respond to an unknown of a customer query, right, or of a customer demand. I, I see. Thank you for that clarification because you're right. It's really not separating. It's decoupling, and that that's important because you you can scale them independently, but you still need compute and you still need storage to run your, your yeah. workloads. But from a cost standpoint, you don't have to buy it in in chunks. You can you can Absolutely. buy granular segments for whatever your workload requires. Is that is that the correct understanding? Yeah, and to be able to, the ability to be able to reuse compute. So in the scenario of AWS or even in the scenario of your on-prem um, solution, you've got this data that's safe and secure in S3 or in pure storage, but then the compute that you have, you can reuse that, right? You could have a scenario that you have um, some query that needs more analytic, more, more firepower, more memory, more what have you that you have. And so you could kind of move compute and that's important, right? That's maybe more important than can I grow them separately? Can I can I borrow it? Can I borrow that compute you're using for my purpose to give it back type of thing? And, and you can do that when you're so easily able to decouple the compute put it where you want. Right. And and likewise, if you have a down period where customers aren't using it, you'd like to be able to not use that compute, right? You know, if, if you no longer require it, you'd like to give it back. So it, it opened the door to a lot of those things that allow performance and cost to start to meet up. What if I can ask you a question? You mentioned Pure a couple of times. Are you using Pure Flashblade on-prem? Is that correct? That is the solution that is supported um, that is supported by Vertica for the on-prem. So um, at this point, we we were we have been discussing with them about some um, our own POCs for that. Um, before again, we back to the idea of how do we see ourselves using it? And so we've certainly discussed the, the feasibility of bringing it in and giving it a shot, but that's not something we're focused that on, hard, heavily on right now. Ben, what is Domo for Domo? Tell, tell us about that. Well, it really started this, this idea, even in the company where we say, you know, we should be using Domo in our everyday business. From the sales folks, the marketing folks, right? Everybody, we're gonna use Domo, it's a business platform. Um, for us in the engineering team, it was kind of like, well, if we use Domo, say for instance, to be better at the database engineers, now we've pointed Domo at itself, right? Vertica's running Domo in the background to some degree, and then we turn around and say, hey, Domo, how can we better at running you? And so it became this kind of cool thing we play with where we're now able to put some, some um, methods together where we can actually do that, right? Where we can monitor using our platform that's really good at processing large amounts of data and spitting out useful analytics, right? We take those analytics now and make recommendations, changes at the data. So now you've got this Domo for Domo happening and it allows us to sit at home and, and work <laughs> now, even when we have to, even before we had to, right? Well, you know, look, look at us here, right? We couldn't meet in Boston physically. We're now meeting remote. You're you're on a hot spot because you got some weather and your satellite internet in, in Atlanta and we're having a great conversation. So. Uh, so we're here with, with Ben White, who's the senior database engineer at Domo. I want to ask you about some of the envelope pushing that you've done around autonomous. You hear that th th that word thrown around a lot, um, means a lot of things to a lot of different people. How do you look at a, a, autonomous and how does it fit with Eon and some of the other things that you're doing? You know, I'm, uh, autonomous and in in the idea of autonomy is something that I don't even know that I'm, I have already ready to define. And so even in my discussion, I, I often mention it as a, a road to it because exactly where it is, it's hard to pin down because there's always this idea of how much trust do you give, right, to the system or how much how much is truly autonomous, how much it are, is being intervened by us, the engineers. So I do hedge on using that. But on this road towards autonomy, when we look at um, what we're, how we're using Domo, and even what that really means to Vertica, because in a lot of my examples, and a lot of the things that we've engineered at Domo were designed to maybe overcome something I thought was a limitation today. And um, so many times, though, as we've done that, Vertica's kind of met us, like right after we kind of engineered or architected something we thought that could help on our side, and Vertica has some release that kind of addresses it. So the autonomy idea and the idea that we could uh, analyze metadata, make recommendations, and then execute those recommendations without intervention is that road to autonomy. And once the databases start to be able to do that, you can see in our ad hoc environment how that would be pretty you know, pretty useful where with 
literally millions of queries every hour trying to figure out what's the best you know profile you know, for years, probably do a better um, job of that than we could. For years, I felt like I, IT folks sometimes were really did not want that automation. They wanted the knobs to turn, but but I wonder if you could comment. I may mean, feel as though the level of complexity now with cloud, with on-prem, with you know hybrid, multi-cloud, the scale, the speed, the real time, it just gets it, it, the pace is just too much for for humans, and so it's almost like you know the industry is is going to have to capitulate to the machine. Uh, and then really trust the machine. Um, but I'm, I'm, si I'm still sensing from you a little bit of hesitation there, but light at the end of the tunnel. I wonder if you could comment. Sure, I think in the light of the end of the tunnel is even in the recent months and recent, um, we've really begun to incorporate more machine learning and um, artificial intelligence into the model, right? And back to where we're saying it. So I do feel that we're getting closer to finding conditions that we don't know about. Because right now our system is kind of a rule, rules-based system where we've said, well, these are the things that we should be looking for. Or these are the things that we think are a problem. Um, to mature to the point where the database is recognizing anomalies and taking on pattern matching and saying, these are problems you didn't know happen. And that's kind of the next step, right? Identifying the things you didn't know. And that's where that's the path we're on now. And that's probably more exciting even than kind of nailing down all the things you think you know and to figure out what we don't know yet. So I want to close with, um, I know you're a, a prominent member of the, uh, and respected member of the Vertica uh, Customer Advisory Board. Uh, you know, without divulging anything confidential, I mean, what are the kinds of things that you want Vertica to do uh, going forward? Oh, I think some of the in, da in database autonomy, um, the ability to take some of the recommendations that we know we can derive from the metadata that already exists in the platform, and start to execute some of the recommendations. Um, and another thing we talked about, and I've been pretty open about talking to it, is talking about it is the um, a new version of the database designer. I think is something that I'm sure they're working on. Um, lightweight, something that can give us that database design without the overhead. Those are two things I think, as they nail, or particularly the database designer, as they perfect that, they'll really have all the components in place to do in base autonomy. And, and I think that's to some degree where they're headed. Yeah, nice. Well, Ben, listen, I really appreciate you coming on. You're a thought leader, uh, you're very open, open-minded. Vertica's a you know, really open community. I mean, they've always been quite transparent in terms of where they're going. It's just awesome to have guys like you on theCUBE to, to share with our community. So thank you so much. And hopefully we can meet face-to-face -face shortly. Absolutely. Well, you stay safe in Boston, uh, one of my favorite towns. And so no doubt when the, when the doors get back open, I'll be com coming down are coming All up right. as it were. Take care. All right, and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante with theCUBE. We're here covering the virtual Vertica Big Data Conference.